Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create your own PDF using PHP. This is an example of what we're going to create just to show you the functionality involved. We're going to create a form using PHP and when the form is filled out, when we click on create PDF, we're going to use mpdf, which is a PHP library, to create a PDF and send it back to your browser as a download. Just as an example, I'm just going to put some details in here. And we'll type a message. And when we click on create PDF, it should automatically download a PDF down here, which will have all the information that we just typed into that form. So let's get started. I'm going to go to a blank project. I'm running XAMPP, which is a local server on my machine. You can do it however you want, but you do need to have PHP running. I also have Sublime Text Editor open and I will actually go to the correct project, which is this one. And everything's blank and ready to go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create an index.php file. Um, so we'll just save that index.php. And let's just add the standard HTML5 scaffolding. And we'll just call it uh, PDF form. Now inside the PHP uh, file, we want to then include Bootstrap. The reason why we're including Bootstrap is just to make it look a bit prettier. So what you want to do is just go to getbootstrap.com and uh, go to get started and we'll just include the CDN. So it's really simple. Just copy that and paste it into the header of your document. Now, what we're going to do is you'll notice here that the page is now just a blank page with the title as PDF form. Let's go and create some of this scaffolding here. Firstly, we want to create a container, which is a bootstrap container, which will just center everything into the screen. And uh, we also want to just give it a, mar uh, a margin top of five so that whatever's in the container isn't right on the top of the document. Now that we've created the container, we want to create this form. And the form is going to be uh, pointing. So when you click on the submit form uh, or the submit button, sorry, it's actually going to go to another PHP file, which is then going to process the document and then create the PDF and spit it out to your browser. So I'll run you through what to put there shortly, but we'll create the form first. So let's just add a title to this form. We'll just say create, create your own PDF. And underneath, we'll just put, you know, fill out the details below and the PDF will download. So now that we've got the title, let's just start creating some of the fields. So what we are going to do is ask for a first name and last name. So input type equals text. Um, and the name of this field, we're just going to call it F name. So that's what is passed through the PHP file so that we can grab the variables on the other end. Okay, we'll just give it a placeholder of first name and we'll give it a class of form control. And I'll actually, I'll, I won't do that class yet just to just to show you the basics and then we'll add all the classes in afterwards. So let's just do this for surname and we'll also do uh, email. So we can give it a type of email and we'll give it a name of email and also put a placeholder as email. Same thing for phone. So we'll just put in tell and then the name will be phone and the placeholder will be phone as well. And then we're going to add a text area and we'll call that message. We'll give it a placeholder of your message and we'll close the text area. And uh, we'll also add a submit button, obviously. So button type equals submit and we'll do create PDF. And I keep missing the ends for some reason. So I'll just go back there and at the end. Good. So, all right, let's go and refresh. And this is how it looks right now. So it looks pretty standard. So let's add in some classes, uh, some bootstrap classes to make it look a bit prettier. So let's just go to the first name field and do class form control. 
and we'll make it required. Now required uses the browser's validation so that it will check if it's valid or if it's been filled out. And if not, it, will, it won't allow you to submit the form until it is. And that's just really basic validation. Uh, if you're going to do a live project, you might want to look into other options and you definitely need to do server side validation as well if, uh, if, if, it's, if it's an important project. But for the sake of making this as simple as possible, I will uh, just use the browser validation. So we'll just copy these cl this class and we'll post it on all of the text fields and uh, also the text area. And we won't make the message required just in case someone doesn't want to write a message. And if we just go and refresh that now, you should see that it's, uh, it's a bit better. Uh, let's add some class to the PDF, uh, the PDF button, create PDF. So button, button success, button large, button block. All these are bootstrap classes and basically this will make it a large button. It will make it full 100% width and it will make it a green button. So let's just go refresh again and you should see now that we have the green button working there. Now let's separate this a bit. So what we need to do firstly is with first name and last name, we want to make them left. So one first name on the left, surname on the right. So in Bootstrap, we can do a row. And inside that row, we can also give uh, put each field in a column. So class col lg6. Actually, we'll make it col md6, which means that it will be in two columns for a medium sized screen, anything smaller will be just, they'll be full width. So now that we've got them in two different um, columns, if we go back to the actual screen to see how it looks, it should have first name and surname there, which is good. And then that row, we'll just give it a margin bottom of two. And then with all of these, all of these fields, cause they're all on their own line, we can just do div class equals MB2. And that will just give it a margin, a bottom margin of, uh, I don't think it's two REM. It's some, it's something described by, uh, that's set by bootstrap, but, um, it just gives it a nice, even gap between the fields. So let's do that and we'll refresh it now. And you should see that now everything's separated very nicely. This container is quite large. So what we can do is we can make the container smaller by adding a class to the actual uh, form. So let's just go class equals col L, uh, MD6. And that, that means that it will be, as you can see, six, uh, six uh, grid, grid size of six. And then we wanna just push it into the center. So we can do offset MD3. And there you go. So we have our form, which is uh, which we can then click on create PDF. And as you can see, the the required uh, validation in the browser is working. Um, now let's go back into this uh, code and let's configure the form. So with the form, we want it to be a post. So we want to post the data that's in the uh, in the fields, and we want to send it to another PHP file. So I'm going to call that make PDF.php. And we're going to go and create a new file called make pdf.php. So now if we go into our project, we type some information. Okay. It's going to take us to make pdf.php, but it says object not found, which is a bit weird. So, and that's because I've misspelt it there. So we'll just go back to make PDF. There we go. And we'll try it again. And you'll notice here that it just comes up as a blank page. So that's good. Now what we want to do in make pdf.php is set up the logic so that we can grab the variables that have been typed into the form and then we want to process them and then add them into a PDF. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a library called mpdf. So if you go onto Google and you type in mpdf, MPDF you should come up with a GitHub repository. If you click into it, this will give you all the information about mpdf and it's my preferred uh, library. There, there is FPDF and a couple of others, but this is just the simplest one for me. Now to install it, we need to use something called Composer. Now, if you don't know what Composer is, just go onto Google again and type in Composer. And 
the top listing should be getcomposer.org. So click into it and then click on download. Now, if you're on a Windows PC, uh, it's going to be quite easy because all you need to do is click on Composer Setup. And then once that's downloaded, just install it. And once it's installed, then we can run uh, Composer and we can install it into our project. So once you've installed Composer, you should be able to go into Command Prompt and uh, run this specific uh, command. Now, let's go back into our project and in, in Sublime Text, I'm able to actually run a terminal inside my particular project. So I can right click on the folder, hit Open Terminal and it'll actually open up a terminal to that URL. But if you actually wanted to do it in and you didn't have that functionality, you could just go to say CMD command prompt and then you could, I guess, type in, uh, go to your actual project by, you know, doing something like this. Um, CD XAMPP, oops, uh, we want to go to the D drive and then CD XAMPP and then we want to go to CD Pro, uh, HT docs. As you can see, it's a bit, it's a bit of a pain. So you need to go to the actual project. And once you're inside that actual project folder, it should look like this. And you can then do composer require MPDF MPDF. So we'll just do composer require MPDF MPDF. So what's going to happen now is command is going, uh, composer is going to work its magic and it's going to create a, uh, a folder, a new folder in your project. It's going to be called the vendor folder, and that will basically store all of the MP, all of the uh, MPDF library uh, classes and stuff like that, which we can easily then include into your project. So we'll just wait for that to install, and I will uh, get started once that's done. Okay, so Composer is now uh, has worked its magic, and it's got MPDF installed into our project. And as you can see now, it just says generating auto alert files, and it's ready to go. So let's just minimize that now. You'll notice we do have a vendor folder here, and there's MPDF in there. Okay, if we go to our GitHub repository for MPDF, you'll notice that there's a bit of a usage thing here, which shows us roughly what to do. So what we can do in our project, we just copy this open up the PHP tags and paste that in there. And that's all we need to include MPDF into our project. Now, now that we've got MPDF included, let's grab the variables that are posted from the form. So when somebody or when you or somebody types in this information here and clicks create PDF, it's going to pass those variables onto this make pdf.php file and we're going to then grab them. So we're going to set the variables now. So we'll set a variable called fname and we will then we will set fname to be the variable that gets sent in the post request. And that is the same as that. So fname, fname. Okay, and same with last name, post l name. Email equals post email, phone equals post phone, and message equals post message. Okay, so now that we have the variables there, we can then manipulate them and add them into a PDF. So with MPDF, we firstly need to create a new instance of the MPDF uh, class. To do that, let's just create one, a variable called MPDF. And we'll do equals new and then backslash MPDF, MPDF, make sure it's capitals, M, capital M. So now that we've got a new uh, PDF instance, let's then create an empty variable called, let's just call it data. And what we're going to do is we're going to store all of the data all of the HTML that we're going to then put into the PDF into this one variable and we're going to use something called concatenation. Okay, so let's start creating our PDF. Okay, so data dot equals and what dot equals is is a, it does concatenation and basically it will, it will add it add whatever's in here to the data variable and then at the end we just include that one variable and it includes everything that's that's been added to it. So 
the first thing we're going to do is maybe add a title to our PDF. So we'll just do H1, your details. And then under that, we will add some data. And we're going to grab it from these variables here. So we'll do uh, data dot equals. I'll just copy that so I can use it in future. And then we'll do, uh, let's say first name. So we'll give it a make a bold and we'll do first name. And then we'll do a space and then we'll do a dot afterwards so we can include the first name variable up there. And then we'll also do open up the inverted, uh, the com inverted commas again and do break so that there's a space between each line. OK, so now that we've done that, let's just do the same thing with last name and just give it L name. And we'll just email phone email and phone email phone and because the message is variable we don't want me the message title coming up if there's no message in the actual uh, form so what we'll do is we'll do if message so if there is a message it basically checks if this variable has something in it so if it does then let's concatenate another uh, field which is uh, we'll just do we'll, we'll do a, a break underneath and then we'll do strong which is bold and then message close the strong tag and do another line so that the message is underneath it and then do dot and then message okay now that we've got our data what we want to do is we, we just want to basically write the PDF so we'll just do this mpdf write html and then in brackets data so it's going to grab everything we've created here and it's going to put it in one variable and then what we want to do is we want to output the whole uh, pdf to the browser so it downloads so we will do pdf so i'll just write a comment output to browser oops browser Oh, okay, there we go. And we'll do PDF equals, actually, we didn't even know, need to do PDF equals. We'll just do MPDF output, and you can call it whatever you want. So we'll just call it mypdf.pdf or myfile.pdf. You can call it whatever you want, as long as it has .pdf afterwards. And then just do the next, uh, the next argument will be D, which is for download. And that's it. So if we save that now and we go back to our project and we'll type in some details. And let's cross our fingers that this works. Great. So we'll create PDF. It will open up a new PDF and it has all those details from that form in there. You'll notice that there is a message there, but if I don't have a message and I create the PDF, the message doesn't come up at all. So that's my simple tutorial on how to create a PDF using PHP. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this form send an email using PHP Mailer and include the PDF as an attachment. So I will uh, include that link in the description eventually of this video. Thank you and I hope that helped. Have a great day.